In this snippet, we'll look at how to use JavaScript to remove an item or items from an array. Hi, this is James from Junior Developer Central and welcome to JavaScript Snippets, a series of tutorials focusing on some of the key things you'll need to do as a junior developer with JavaScript. If you have a second, don't forget to subscribe below so that you don't miss out on any of these essential JavaScript training tutorials. Okay, so we're going to look at a few different ways of removing items from an array. And probably the most common function you'll see being used to do this is the pop function. And that's something you can actually just call directly onto the array. So I've got a variable here, array1. And if I just call pop on top of that, what this will do if you look at the definition of the function is it will remove the last element from the array and also return it. So if we were to just run this code now, you'll see the array that we've got stored actually comes back with one less value. So the tens removed from the end. And if we were actually to call that function a couple of times, you'll see another item gets removed and still from the end of the array. So this time the five got removed. So as the function definition did say, these values do actually get returned. So we could actually catch those values and store them into some variables. So if I set up two variables there and actually just print those out to the console, A and B, you'll see that I get the last two values from the array being printed out. And if I was still to print the array out, it's as it was before, and we still get the other values in the remainder of the array. So that, as I say, is probably the most common way that you'll find and probably the most frequent that you will use in your code as well. Uh, the other way is if what if we actually wanted to I should remove those uh, values from there? What if we actually wanted to remove something at the start of the array? Well, we can do that as well. If we say array one dot shift. And if you watch the output on the right hand side, you'll see that the first value from the array, the one actually gets removed. And then the rest of the array is printed out from the number two. And same thing again, we can actually save the output of that into a variable. So if I actually wanted to store that value and then use it later on in the code, we just set up a variable definition and put our shift function on the right hand side of that. So those are probably the two most common ways that you'll come across. But what about if you want to remove a specific item from the array? So another function that we can use is the splice function. And what this does is actually removes part of our array but leaves the rest intact. So we just need to specify where we want to remove something from and how many items we want to remove. So if we wanted to remove the second item in the array, the number two, we would actually specify the number one. Because an array is zero indexed, so the item at position zero is actually the first item in our array, which is number one. And the second thing we need to specify is how many items we want to delete. So we just say one again, so we just want to remove that number two in the second position. And you can see when the code runs, we actually remove the two from the array and we've got the nine elements left that were originally there. Okay, so splice is really useful if you know the position of the item in the array that you want to remove. But what about if you just want to remove certain numbers that are larger than five, for example? You could do a for loop and loop through each of the items and see if it's larger than the number that we want to get rid of and then splice those out of the array as we have just done. But there's a bit of a cleverer way of doing it and that is using the higher order filter function which can be used to remove lots of items from an array based on a certain rule that we pass in. So let's have a look at an example of that now. So with the filter function it actually expects to you to pass a function directly into it itself. So you might see something like this within a filter function and this function will run for every item that's in the array. Uh, I'm actually just going to use an ES6 arrow function here because it just makes it a little bit easier to read what's going on. So I mentioned this function runs for every item that's in the array, so we can just pass that in as an argument to our anonymous function here. And if I simply say return item, and then we'll just log out this new array into, into the console, you'll see it returns just the original array that we had set up in array1. So in this return part of the function is where we want to specify the items that we want to keep in our array. So if we say any item that is equal to 1 is our expression in our return statement, you'll see that only the values of 1 remain in the array. And this can be pretty much any expression that you want to put in there. So for example, we could say if your item is larger than or equal to 5, basically anything smaller than that will be removed from the array. So your return statements can end up getting quite complicated, especially when you're dealing with objects inside your array. But you can see from this example that it's quite simple to specify a rule of what items you want to keep in the array and which ones you want to throw away. 
As a side note, we could actually remove this return statement from here and use the ES6 arrow function implicit return statement and do something like this. And it would do the same thing and it's, our code is even shorter and even neater now. So one final thing before we finish off, uh, a common problem or a common task for junior developers to do is to remove duplicate items from an array. And you can see the array one that we have at the moment, there's a couple of ones in there and a couple of twos. So we want to remove those duplicate items, but we want to keep at least one of those values in there. So what we can actually do with our filter function is access another argument, which is the position argument. I'll just say pause for short. And that's that actual, every time the loop goes through, every time we check one of these items in the array, pause will give us the position that we're actually in. So zero, one, two, three, until we're at the end of the array. So what we could say in our return statement is uh, array one dot index of. So this will tell us what position the item is in the array. And we'll just check the item itself and we'll just say that is equal to pause. And if we run that code, you can see we've only got unique items in our array. And the way this works is every time the index of function gets called, the item is checked in the array. And if this is the first occurrence of it, so if the index of is equal to the same position that we're in in the array, we get a positive result and the item gets kept. But if the result of array one dot index of item is less than pause, because we'll look at the start of the array first, if that's a lower value, the statement will be false and the item will be removed from the array. So there are lots of other ways of checking whether an item is actually a duplicate in an array, but because we're looking at the filter function here and we've got a fairly simple array, this is a good example and a good technique to use if you want to remove duplicate items in your array. So that's it for this snippet. I hope you found that useful. There's a few different ways, obviously, that you can remove items from an array, and we've gone through some of the most common ways here. Just before you go, don't forget to subscribe to the channel so that you don't miss out on any more JavaScript snippet tutorials. Bye for now.